Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video, we are talking all about some impractical bathroom design ideas and trends that we can avoid and save ourselves. We've got some things to talk about, so let's get into the video. The first impractical bathroom design idea and trend I'm exposing is the rainfall shower head. I actually like these in their design, I think, Aesthetically, they are beautiful. However, the reality of using them is not there for me. I am a person that is basically blind. Okay, I can't see anything. I can see about three inches in front of my face and that's it without my contacts. So I wear them in the shower. If I'm in a rainfall shower head and I'm standing upright, I either have to have my eyes closed because the water is like pouring down on me or I have to have my head down the entire time. That's not comfortable for me and I don't like it. It is not what is happening or I have to stand outside of the rainfall and then I'm like soaking wet, completely naked and freezing cold. I don't like that. It's not for me. I prefer a shower head that is attached to the wall. However, I also am really loving to have a handheld shower head that's removable. So I think if you're doing renovations, if you are upgrading your bathroom or if you're building new, it's worth really taking the time to think about what's going to be the most convenient thing for you and the way you bathe in your shower. That way you're getting nice and clean. We smell great and fresh. That way when I am on the street and you walk past I don't have to smell you and I love that for me. It's also worth considering that a handheld shower head can be removed and used to clean the shower. You just kind of hose everything down and it's good to go. I love that for us, I love it for me and I love it for you. It is also a really great feature to have if you have accessibility concerns. You may have to sit in the shower. It's nice to be able to hold a shower head and bathe yourself and raise it above your head, wash your hair, that sort of thing. A convenience factor, I think that's really wonderful. And there are usually converters where you can have them added on to the shower head. I don't mess with plumbing and I always recommend you hire a plumber to have any of that stuff done for you. But those are always nice to have in a shower. I just think the rainfall shower head looks good in pictures and magazines. I love it in a hotel, but to have the water coming straight down limits where I can actually stand and use it. And it's always been like a little confusing to me when I see these giant massive showers that have a rainfall shower head because you know like nobody is using the rest of the shower. It's just, there's no water there. It's just completely empty. Like if you're standing right under the waterfall head, makes no sense to me. Plus having to stand under it with my head down, like that's gonna be like not good for my neck and I'm not feeling that. I had one in my last house, so I know what I'm talking about. And it was my last house. I don't live there anymore for a reason. I don't think you need to reinvent the wheel when it comes to design sometimes because the easiest thing can be the most convenient, the most usable and something else I need to touch base on we need to talk about before we move on from this is that you want to be mindful of where you are putting a wall mounted shower head. You want it to be high enough that tall people can stand under it. My husband and I, we're not short people, we're not the tallest of people, but if our shower head is mounted six feet from the floor, it has a gooseneck on it and then it actually has a shower head, meaning it's going to be too low for us to actually stand under it and use. You want those shower heads to be mounted about seven feet from the floor, kind of at a minimum. That way there is clearance there for a tall person to get under it and actually use the shower. Definitely consider that and the convenience of everyone that will be using that space or that shower and design the shower to be the most convenient thing in the space. We also need to talk about one of the most inconvenient features a shower has that can actually be a safety concern, issue and hazard, and that is the lip that you have to step over to get into the shower. These are designed to keep the water in and that's fantastic. That is the point of a shower and waterproofing. However, it is 2022 we can move on from these really high shower lips to a zero threshold. This is one of the most popular trends or design ideas for bathrooms. And it's one of the most convenient features you can add to a space because of a number of reasons. One, it just looks clean. Two, having that lip is actually a safety hazard. And stepping over that lip could cause you to slip and fall, lose your balance, and that can be a major risk. And the third reason I really, really love these is that 
The zero threshold shower has existed forever, okay? And you see this often with wet rooms that there is no definitive shower space in them. It's all one room, so all of the water drains and they're completely waterproofed. This uses that same idea. However, it is an accessible design feature because it really is safe. It really is convenient to be able to access them, to be able to get a wheelchair into the space, to be able to walk into them with a walker. That is so important and I love Love that we are taking this accessible design idea and bringing it into more mainstream bathrooms and it makes the space accessible it makes it more usable for everyone i think that's amazing that we can have a conversation about accessible design for everyone in every space and it looks beautiful we're elevating it to a place that it doesn't have to be a purely utilitarian feature in a bathroom. You all know I absolutely believe that you can combine aesthetic and a beautiful space with the safety and convenience factors that everyone needs. Those of you that are a part of the Le Chic family know I constantly bring that to you, but if you have not subscribed already, please take a moment and hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell notification to get notified every time I upload. And after you have done so, please let me know in the comment section so that I can personally welcome you to the channel. One of the biggest things we have to talk about, one of the biggest safety features and hazards in a bathroom, a terrible design idea, and a little bit of a trend right now that we need to squash before it gets out of hand is oversized tiles. I love these on a wall. I think that's a great place for them, but on a floor, you want to have more grout lines. And I know for some people it's like, Garrett, no, that means more cleaning. And yes, that is what it means. However, grout lines provide traction for your feet. In a bathroom, you have bathtubs and you have showers. And when you get out of them, you tend to be wet. At least if you're using them the right way, you are. So you step onto the tile outside of that. And if it's a large tile, you may not have traction and it can be a slipping hazard, a tripping hazard. Nobody wants that. Plus what is very popular right now are more mosaic style tiles. People love a historic reference and we're seeing lots of penny rounds and hexagon tiles. A mosaic tile is of course always beautiful on a floor, but we are also seeing a lot of people who really love that slab look to the floors. It is gorgeous and I cannot fault that. However, safety comes first for me and I would rather compromise on having that slab look floor to not fall down in my bathroom, especially on a hard surface where you are at greater risk of injury, not worth it, not happening, not a vibe. And you may have to call 911, but don't call me because I already told you about it, honey, okay? One of the things I just can't stand in a bathroom, a design idea, a trend, I think is just impractical is the floating countertop. I feel like I see this a lot in minimally designed spaces because it has a very commercial look to it. And that is actually what it's designed for, commercial spaces and hotels where storage is not really an issue. And that's the big part of it. There's no storage there. It's literally just a countertop. There's no drawers, nowhere for you to put your things other than on top of it. And clutter is not elevated. It's not the vibe. You don't want that in your space. I want to see storage. So if you are considering putting this in, if you're like, Garrett, I have to have it. It's the only option. Look for a medicine cabinet. Look for some conveniently close storage options that you can incorporate into the space so you can have a place to put your things. And honey, you need to make sure you have your toothbrush and your toothpaste accessible because none of us want to smell your bad breath out in public. <laughs> I've actually talked about this before and a lot of people said it's really great for accessible design. And the truth of the matter is what works for accessible design and this design idea don't always align perfectly, especially if you have something like a vessel sink, which we will talk about in a minute. I also recommend looking into the ADA codes and regulations and guidelines you want for accessible design because that can make a big impact on what you're designing. I do not want you to spend money on a accessible design design that is not accessible. It will just be a waste of money if you can't actually use it. Now, I think I just talked about vessel sinks and we have got to get into that a little bit because it is a trend that is becoming popular again. It was popular for a while and it went out of popularity for a reason and I have zero problem reminding everyone of why that was. And that's because they're inconvenient and they're actually a little bit difficult to work with and design around. Vessel sinks have depth. They are six to nine inches tall, 
typically. And if you want that sink height to remain at 36 inches, which is kind of the standard, you then have to drop your countertop height. So you have to get a new cabinet. And if you don't do that, you could go along with that okay, but then the sink height's gonna be at about 42 inches, which is very tall and not reachable for most people. So it is a little bit of a big job to install this. They also definitely give me Home Makeover TV show from 2006 vibes. I like now that we are doing them in a more minimal way. They're kind of a classic white ceramic that looks good, but I don't think it is the most timeless of trends. People got away from it because it was inconvenient, because you have to clean all underneath it, you lose countertop space, and for it to be at a height that's reachable, your actual countertop is now dropped six inches, and that can be really inconvenient because if you're putting things there, you're placing them there, you have this big disparity between the height of the sink and the countertop, a lot of people just don't like it. Something else worth considering is that you have to find specific faucets to work with this. Either very tall necked faucets that will actually go from the countertop above the sink so that they go into the sink or wall mounted faucets. And wall mounted faucets typically are not reachable for kids. So that's not really the best idea. They have to lean all the way over the countertop, which is typically two feet deep. So not a great design idea. It's not something I really love. Although what I will say is that most of the photos you'll probably see in this video have them and that's because they are becoming more popular. I personally think it looks good, but the usability, the functionality is just not there for me. In my opinion, this is a trend that just like the early 2000s when we saw, a lot of people did it, a lot of people liked it, they realized it wasn't convenient, it was impractical, they got rid of it, the same thing is gonna happen now. The next thing we actually have to talk about because sinks remind me of the hardware and faucets we use is unlacquered brass. I talk about this when it comes to kitchens quite often because it is a big trend at the moment, but unlacquered brass patinas. It ages and it has to be polished. I'm not polishing anything more than I have to. You all know I collect silver. I gotta take care of all of that. I'm not polishing faucets and handles and knobs and everything, no, absolutely not, not for me. I don't like that because it requires a lot of extra work. And when you get that brass, it's very shiny and new and pretty and most people install it and they're like, it's gorgeous and I love it and they don't realize it starts to patina as you use it and that can happen actually very quickly. So going for polished brass, which has a lacquer on it, will get you that very fresh, crisp, and clean look you might be after without the age and the maintenance of taking care of brass that will patina because you might polish it once and it's gonna need to be polished again. That has to happen regularly. And if it doesn't happen regularly, the brass can corrode and it can also stain your countertops and your sink. And that's not something anyone wants, especially not when you spend a lot of money on them and you want them to look really good all the time. One of the most impractical things you can use in your house is one of the things I love the most. And even though I love it, I'm going to be honest with you. That's what I always do. And I always try and keep it real. I give you the best advice I can, even if I don't always take that myself. And that is marble. Marble is not the hardest wearing of materials because it is a porous stone. That is very true. However, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful and I love it. I think the high maintenance of it is worth me having it. polished marble will age and it will get water spots it will become honed over time from usage and a bathroom is a place you use regularly you need to be having a shower pretty regularly in my opinion you need to be washing your hands and brushing your teeth okay i think we all learned that well enough we use those spaces so they get use and if you are not extra super careful, the marble will get aged. So I recommend going for a honed stone. This has a more matte-like finish on it. It doesn't show the age quite so much, and on floors it has a little bit of attraction to it. So getting a marble mosaic tile for your floors, you get the traction from it being a mosaic and having those grout lines, and you're getting it from it being honed, plus you're saving yourself from those water spots and wear that shows with polished marble. So what I recommend is you really consider what's right for you in each space in your home. 
Maybe in the powder bathroom, you wanna show off, you want it to be glamorous and you do marble. Maybe in your primary bathroom, you're like, Garrett, I pay the bills here and I need to be glamorous, darling. We're doing full marble and I love that for you. Well, there you have it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to share with me in the comment section down below. Be sure you take a moment and hit the subscribe button because I have got one of the most exciting and most amazing videos coming from an exotic off-site location coming to you in September. So be on the lookout for that. Be sure you give this video a like. And I also know that you know someone that they either did their bathroom and you just wanna be a little shady or they are doing their spaces in their homes. They are coming up with all of these designs and you're like, I don't wanna to have to listen to my friend complain about this. Maybe it's your mother-in-law. Maybe it's your sister-in-law. Ugh. Share this video with them because friends help friends and I will see you in the next one.